What's going on there, YouTube? Welcome back to another comic book video. Okay, so we're going to, well, we're going to continue our coverage over the X-Men, but things are going to be a tad bit different. Let me explain. You see, in the early 1990s, Peter David took over the X-Factor book, but at that same time, he was also writing The Hulk. And so he thought it would be a great idea to have a crossover. You see, in the 90s, there were a lot of crossovers. Matter of fact, we had just covered the X-Men and Ghost Rider one. Either way, it's now time for the Hulk and also X-Factor. Now really, this is more of a Hulk story, but X-Factor does have a chapter that does go into the middle of this three-part story arc that takes place over over in the Incredible Hulk book. Now, there are a few things we have to talk about, like, for example, the whole idea of what was going on with the Hulk. So let me explain. You see, around his time in Marvel Comics, the Hulk was going through a lot because in the mind of Bruce Banner, there were three different personas. You had Bruce, you had Savage Hulk, and you also had the Gray Hulk. Now, the Gray Hulk and Savage Hulk, they were fighting for control. But thankfully, thanks for Dr. Samson, he was able to take all three personas and kind of merge them together to make a new persona, a Hulk that is actually smart, an intelligent Hulk. And so it kind of gives us the ability to see a new kind of Hulk out there in the world of Marvel Comics. But now we have to talk about the Pantheon. Now the Pantheon was a group of people who were actually descendants to a certain god. Now this god, his actual name was Val Halfling. Now Val Halfling is an Asgardian, half Asgardian, half human, but also he is the son of Loki. Now the Pantheons, like I said, they are his descendants. But they were an actual group that were based in Nevada. And around this time in Marvel Comics, the Hulk was actually working alongside with them. And really, we're going to see them here and there in this actual story arc. But for the Hulk, he's also staying with them at their base called the Mount. And again, that is based in Nevada. And so now we are able to actually dive into the storyline where we pick up with Hulk issue number 390. Now, we have to jump over to a country called Transabal, and I really hope I pronounced that correctly. Now, this country is unfortunately going through a civil war. And here's the thing, the people are trying to bring down their leader, a guy known as Fernock Don. And Fernock is going to be very important for well today's video now with all that being said well you see the leader was able to call in some help from america and america has sent over some mandroid armor suits now mandroids like i said are armor suits that can be worn in battle and so these suits are really powerful but the resistance the people who are trying to bring down their leader well they have an anti-armor cannon but the problem is the cannon was knocked off its actual mount and so right now Unfortunately, the people are about to lose this battle against the leader's army. But luckily for the people who are trying to fight back, they get some help. And that help would be the Hulk. Now, the reason why the Hulk is here is going to be explained to us down the road later in this video. But the reason why he's here right now, we can say, is that he's here to help out because the Pantheons, that new group he joined, also wanted to help out. Now, we do see that one of the members of the Pantheons is actually here, and that would be Hector. Now, Hector is knocked out mid-battle, but luckily for Hector, Rick Jones is there to wake him up. And so you have Hector and Rick being able to jump back into the battle with the Hulk to hopefully bring down the army of Trans Sabal to help the resistance fight back against the people who are trying to bring them down. Now we actually jump over to Fornok and we see Fornok just kind of entertaining his guests 
while there's a huge battle taking place in his country. Now, we do learn, really, we already did find out earlier that he is getting his special equipment, his weapons from America. But it seems like the reason why he's able to get his hands on those weapons is because of a certain CIA agent known as Gavin. Now, when it comes to Gavin, he does not really like Fernock, but at the same time being forced to work with him. Now, you do have Gavin walk out of the room for a brief moment, but that is when he is confronted by one of his assistants who tells him like, hey, we got a big problem right now. And unfortunately, that big problem is a big green monster better known as the Hulk. Now, back over to the battlefield, we do see the Hulk being able to do a huge number to the army of Fernok. Like, the Hulk is taking down all these different battle armor suits. Now, he does have some help from the Pantheons as well. More members of that group right there does appear to help out. But after a few more pages of the battle, we do see Rick and one of the other members of the Pantheons go to examine one of the mandroid armor suits. And that is when they find out that this mandroid armor suit came from S.H.I.E.L.D., came from America. And so for Rick Jones in the Pantheons, they're kind of like, what in the world have we guided ourselves into at this moment? And so that is when we get a flashback where we have Rick stopping by the base of the Pantheons, better known as the Mount. Now, when he stops by there, it's really him trying to give Bruce Banner a gift. And this gift is actually a pair of, well, bunny slippers from Betty because at this time in Marvel Comics, they were actually married. Now, you didn't have Hulk wanting to show Rick what's going to be his next mission. And so you have Hulk walk Wick over to, well, the med lab, where we see a bunch of victims currently being treated. Now, these victims came from the war over in Trans Sabal, the war in the present day where you have the Hulk fighting in at the moment. And so you have Hulk telling Rick in this flashback that him and the Pantheons had agreed to go over to that country and to remove their leader because right now this war, it has to stop. Innocent people are being killed off and people are starving and dying in that country while the leader is truthfully not trying to make things better for everybody. Now, for Peter David, there is a plot line going on with the whole idea of who is Rick's biological parents? Because we kind of find out that with Betty Wass working at a hotline at this time in Marvel Comics, she gets a call from somebody. And if somebody's name is Jacqueline, and I'm going to most likely mispronounce the last name, sure. And apparently she is claiming to be the mother to Rick Jones. Now that is pretty huge. But getting back over to Fernock and also the CIA agent known as Gavin, they're kind of wondering like, okay, how in the world are we going to handle this Hulk problem? And that leads into him saying, you know what? I think I have an idea because we do have a new kind of task force that could most likely deal with the Hulk. And of course, he is talking about X Factor. Now, in the opening pages of Hulk issue number 391, we do pick up with Rick Jones. Now, this is Rick Jones telling the Hulk that he feels like that the Hulk in the Pantheon group is actually on the wrong side here. Let me explain. So what he is saying is that when they found the Mandroid armor suits earlier, they realized those suits were created by S.H.I.E.L.D. And of course, S.H.I.E.L.D. works for America. And so for Rick, it's kind of like, why would America help out the bad guys? Like, wouldn't America help out the good guys? And if you're saying that the people who are trying to fight against their leader is actually good and their leader is bad, then again, why would America be helping him? And so now is Rick saying, I feel like we may be on the wrong side here. Now for the Hulk, he's kind of like, no, there's no way that we're on the wrong side here. But hey, listen, I'm hoping that sooner or later, the picture will be clear for you to hopefully help you understand that we have chosen the right side here.
Jump over to X Factor and real quickly, I kind of want to explain how things are going for X Factor around this time in Marvel Comics. You see, for X Factor around this time, after the original team had rejoined the X-Men, you had Val Cooper and the U.S. government agree to make a new X Factor team that would work for the government as a way to build relations between the government of the U.S. and also the mutant race. And so, unfortunately, there's going to be a lot of times where X Factor is going to be involved in some, you know, government issues like this one. Now, now, when they do arrive in the country, they are confronted by Galvin, the CIA agent, and also Far Knock, where you do have the two characters explain what's happening in the country. The whole idea that right now, there are a group of people who are wanting their leader gone from the country, and the U.S. has to help out Far Knock because their country is allies with the U.S. But on top of that, now they have to deal with the Panther group in the Hulk, a vigilante group to Galvin. Now for X Factor, they kind of know that the U.S. kind of being forced to help out because again, they're allies with this country, but at the same time, having realized that Farnock is not really a good leader because he has heard what's really happening in this country. But again, X Factor works for the U.S. government. They have no choice here. They have to help out. Now, I want to jump back over to the Hulk and also the Pantheon group as they're trying to plot out how they're going to actually help the resistance fight against Fornok and his army and remove him as the leader of this country. Now, while you have the Hulk and also the Pantheon group trying to figure that out, I want to shift our focus over to Rick because Rick Jones is walking around the area where he is able to talk to a guy known as, well, Shirk. And I really hope I pronounced that correctly. Now, for Shirk, he does explain why he had joined the resistance, that his father was killed, and then his mom had committed suicide because, well, what they had done to her, but what they had done to his father as well. And so for Rick Jones, it's kind of him getting a better idea of who is actually the good guys here. And right now, it does seem to be the resistance. Distance. But now it's time for us to get into the whole idea of this crossover. So you have the Hulk once again leading the resistance against the army of Farnock. Now while doing that, at first, it does seem like they're about to actually win the battle. Because the Hulk is able to just run through all the different weapons that Farnock army have brought over with them to hopefully bring down the Hulk. But then in the middle of the battle, you have the Hulk get blasted out of nowhere and this leads into well you already know what's about to happen right now the hulk is about to fight against x factor now you do have x factor being able to do some damage to the hulk but really the battle does shift its focus over to the hulk versus havoc now while you have havoc trying to use his full power to bring down the hulk you have the pantheon group going ahead to move on to the palace to hopefully bring down their leader except when they do arrive at the palace well there's a huge explosion and that kind of tells us that explosion came from havoc fighting against the hulk but now the question is did the Hulk survive? Did X Factor survive as well? That is the big question as we go into the third chapter, which leads over to X Factor issue number 76. But now we have to jump over to X Factor issue number 76. Now, as we do, we actually pick up with Wolfbane. Now, guys, remember Wolfbane left. Uh, Genosha and had joined X Factor right after Peter David had taken over the title. Now for Wolfbane, we actually see her knocked out thanks to the explosion of the battle between Havoc and the Hulk. Now here's the problem. You see, she's miles away from the rest of her team. And so she is founded by two people, a young man and his sister. And they pick her up and they take her away. And so we're kind of left to believe at first that maybe they're going to actually help her give her some medical help 
Now, the rest of the X Factor team, they don't realize that Wolfbane is gone. Matter of fact, they're looking for Havoc because Havoc was battling against the Hulk. And there was a huge explosion between those two characters. And so you have our heroes just trying their best to locate their missing friend. And that is the big problem for them at the moment. But then they realize the Pantheon group is attacking again, attacking the government army. And so unfortunately, our heroes had to stop looking for havoc and go back into the battle against the Pantheons. Now, I want to jump back over to Wolfbane. Here's the reason why. See, Wolfbane was actually found by a young man known as Joel and also his sister, Sanda. Now, here comes the big problem. You see, for Joel, he's kind of wondering if Wolfbane is somebody that he can trust. And here's the reason why. He's one of the people who are technically being affected by the war between the resistance and also the government, but he's not on the side of the resistance. He's on the side of the government because he truly believes that Farnock is actually a good man, a godly man. And so because of that, he's wondering if possibly Wolfbane must be taken care of because she goes against his God. Now, here's something else I want to mention. He is the head of the household in his mind, which means that his sister has no right to say anything at all or tell us what she actually feels. And matter of fact, when she tries to speak up, he tells her to be quiet and only talk when he can talk. And that's really it. Now, for the X-Force team, they're still dealing with the Pantheon group. And so we do get a few more pages of those characters going against each other. And it's kind of cool to see that. But of course, Havoc's still missing and Wolfbane still being held as a hostage. And the Hulk is not here at the moment because, well, he was battling against Havoc. And as we saw earlier with that huge explosion, now both characters had just disappeared. We don't know where they have exactly gone too. But yes, you still have the X-Factor team fighting against the Pantheon. Now, I want to skip over a few pages. And the reason why, because the book does kind of go back and forth between the whole idea of X-Factor fighting against the Pantheons and also Wolfbane being a hostage. So to save us some time, I want to go ahead and jump to the actual end of this video. Not a video, sorry. The end of this chapter. Because you do have Wolfbane almost breaking free from the binds that were put on her thanks to Joelle. Now, she's also near the nearest battle, between X-Factor and also the Pantheons. And that battle is really more Quicksilver fighting against one of the members of the Pantheons. Now, while she's trying to get away, Joelle's sister actually helps out and begins to try to help her break free from the binds. But her brother gets very angry because remember, he is the head of the household. And so to him, you have to do whatever he says. And so once he sees his sister trying to help free Wolfbane and he knows that Wolfbane Wolfbane is an enemy against his god, Farnock, you actually have Joel begin to harm his sister. And that makes Wolfbane very angry. And this is kind of the beginning process of us seeing her kind of turn into a wild animal because she does go after Joel, killing him. Now, she is founded by Quicksilver, and when she is founded by Quicksilver, he picks her up and they run off to rejoin the rest of X-Factor. But for Quicksilver, he can tell that there's something wrong with Wolfbane, but she's not trying to tell him. But we as the readers, we now know there is something wrong with her. Now, this is not the first time that she actually gone wild and actually killed somebody being like a wild animal, but it has been a while since she done the last time in our coverage over the X-Men. But now it's time for us to wrap up this story as we jump back over to Hulk issue number 392, where we actually pick up with Havoc now being bound to some kind of device. Now, apparently, after the battle between him and the Hulk, he was found by some of the men who worked for Farnock, and Farnock felt like he could use Havoc as a special kind of weapon because Farnock and his country have basically signed an agreement that they would not have any kind of nuclear weapons. But that actual contract did not say like, hey, you can use a powerful mutant as a powerful weapon. And so for Farnock, he's all like, hey, 
guess what? I'm going to use you against your will as a powerful weapon against my enemies. If anybody tries to stop me, well, hey, I now have you because I realize how powerful you truly are. Now, Val Cooper, the actual liaison, the person who works for the U.S. government but is being used as a way to represent X-Factor, well, she's also have been captured by Farnock. You see, earlier in the story arc, these two characters had drinks, Farnock and Val. And, well, he slipped some drugs into her actual drink, which, of course, led to her being under his control. And so, now having seems like he might be in a very tough spot because now... The one person who's actually nearby is not really able to be in control of her own body. But after you have Farnock and also Val Cooper walk away, we do see that someone was able to sneak into the actual facility. And that would be the Hulk. And so now we know the Hulk did survive the battle between him and Havoc, which honestly, no surprise there. But Hulk was able to sneak his way into the actual facility. Now the question is, is Hulk going to help Havoc out here by breaking him free? Now, we also get reminded about Galvin, the CIA agent. And remember, he was there to kind of help out Farnock because the U.S. is the country's ally. And so the U.S. have been giving this country different kinds of weapons to use against the resistance. But here comes the big problem. You see, Farnock had crossed too many lines. And so for Galvin, enough is enough. It's time for him to step in and stop Farnock. The problem is Farnock stabs Galvin, killing him off. And he says, listen, with you out of my way, I am now able to continue on with my plans. And he just walks away. Now, all of that is happening inside the facility. But on the outside of the place, we actually see X-Factor still fighting against the Pantheons. And really, their battle goes back and forth for a couple of pages, but it kind of tells us that sooner or later, they're going to be really important when it comes to the end of this story arc. But for right now, they're outside just fighting against one another while you have the Hulk and Havoc and Val Cooper inside the actual base of Farnock. But now we had to sit down and talk about the Hulk and Havoc's conversation because for Havoc, he's kind of like, listen, Hulk, I understand what you are trying to do here. Like, yes, you know that Farnock is a horrible leader. You know that he should be removed. But here's the problem, though. What right do you have to jump into a battle between two different parties and make sure that your judgment is the actual right choice? Because you don't know actually what could happen if you do remove Farnock as the leader of this country. What if somebody else, even worse, steps into that actual role? Now for Havoc, his, it's him also kind of agreeing with the Hulk saying like, yes, I know that Farnock is evil. I know he is a horrible man. But at the same time, you have to realize you are just one man trying to decide what should be done for an entire country full of people. What right do you have? But it's also Havoc saying, what's next for you, Den Hulk? Like, if you stop this world leader, are you going to go after other world leaders around the world when they make bad decisions as well? And yes, this is a huge bad decision. But what if other world leaders out there make smaller bad decisions? Are you and your team of the Pantheons are going to go out to those countries and do the same thing you're doing right now in this country? Is Havoc saying you need to think about what you're actually doing here? But now I want to shift our focus back over to the battle between X-Factor and also the Pantheon because their battle is getting very intense to the point where there is a character known as Argo and Argo is driving a very special kind of vehicle to fight against X-Factor with. Now the problem is Strong Guy, he had absorbed a lot of energy and we had talked about this before. You see, for Strong Guy, he does get stronger the more kinetic energy that he does absorb but the problem is is that if he absorbed too much kinetic energy he has to let it go somehow by punching things out and so we see strong guy just going at it on the vehicle that argo is inside of 
to the point where you have strong guy throw the vehicle across the battlefield and it crashes into a boulder. Now when it does, it catches on fire and Argo is able to get out just in time. But the problem is you have Wolfbane find him. Now she believes that he had been badly burned when she looks at his face. And let's not forget, in the last chapter, Wolfbane had just killed a guy because she went feral. But either way, when she looks at Argo, she's kind of like, oh my God, Look at what we done to this guy. His face has been burned. Except his brother come by and says, no, his face was always like that. But move, gather away so I can take my brother somewhere safe to get healed up. But now it's time for us to kind of wrap everything up. And so we do jump into Farnock's big plan. And we do learn that his big plan is to use different kinds of missiles to keep everyone in place, to make sure the resistance will stop trying to attack him and his army. Now, here's the catch. On every single missile, there's somebody actually tied to them. So for example, there are innocent children who are tied to those missiles, children who belong to parents who are part of the resistance. But also Havoc is one of the people who are also tied to a missile. Now, he's not gonna shoot the missile that Havoc is on, but at the same time, he wants everyone to believe that he is not scared to use innocent people to stop the resistance from attacking him and his army. Now, to show off his power, he does fire two missiles that does have a young child and a mother on each one of those two missiles. Now, luckily for our heroes, Havoc, not Havoc, sorry, the Hulk was able to save the child, and you have Polaris and Quicksilver work together to save the mother. Now you do have the Hulk being able to get over to Fornok and bring him out in front of all the different people of the country. Now for X Factor, for the Hulk, for the uh, Pantheons, they believe that the people are going to finally have justice. They're going to go ahead and kill off their own leader, except they don't. Instead, they bow down to him. And it kind of shows like even though he has been a bad leader, even though he deserves to be removed as the leader of the actual country, the people are not really going to go ahead and take that next step because they were the ones who kind of put this man in that position, but some of them still look at him as some kind of God. Now, with that being said, you didn't have Rick Jones in a mandroid suit shoot and kill off, well, far knock just like that. Now, everyone is surprised that Rick Jones was the one who actually did it. But let's not forget that this man has been with the Hulk in the Pantheons and the Resistance the entire time. And he had heard so many different stories about what was happening to the people in this country. And so he knew if they could not finish the job, he had to be the one. And bam, just like that, for Nock is dead. And now it's time for this country to begin to have some, you know, a new election to bring someone else in to be that leader. But now this is where we are going to end today's comic book video. So please leave me a like down below and subscribe. But guys, see y'all next time. Later. <laughs>